Hello from London. My dad and I were here almost exactly a year ago, but now I'm here on a solo trip because I had a little bit of a hotel credit left over from our last trip and I wanted to use it. It was about $300, which unfortunately was only enough to pay for two nights. So after that, I'm gonna leave London and take the Eurostar down to Paris, be there for a couple of days and then go to some other little towns around Paris. I'm really excited and I am I'm happy that you have tuned in. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe so you can see all the videos in the series. And I will go ahead and tell you what I've gotten up to so far here in London. After dropping my bags off at the hotel, I walked across the river to admire Big Ben. Last time I was here, it still had some scaffolding from a remodel, but it's gone now. Then I visited Westminster Abbey, which is a gorgeous church. Next, I walked over to St. James's Park, which is one of my favorite places in London. The park is about 57 acres with famous landmarks on all sides, including Buckingham Palace. It is a great place to see nature in the heart of the city and go bird watching. In spring, the park is extra beautiful with all of the flowers and sweeping green willow trees. You might also be lucky enough to see baby ducks or geese. After soaking in the sun, I headed back to the hotel to rest up for a Potterhead bucket list attraction the next day. Good morning! I've come up to the Harry Potter studio tour today and I'm super excited. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. We didn't do it last time we were in London because it's not really something my dad's into and I didn't want to drag him along, but I'm super excited. At the end, I'll tell you about like the public transportation, how I got here, price of tickets and all of that. But let's go ahead and go in and see all the sets and props and costumes of the Harry Potter movies. The tour starts with a couple of presentations and then it is time to enter the Great Hall. Perfect, round of applause and do make your way in as this is the one, the only, the Great Hall. It was one of the very first sets ever constructed for the film series. After the Great Hall, you can walk through the studio tour at your own pace. There is so, so much to see from iconic props and costumes to complete sets with incredible attention to detail. During the course of 10 years, all eight Harry Potter movies were filmed almost in their entirety at these Warner Brothers studios using a soundstage. It is crazy walking around the place where the magic was made. Throughout the tour, you get to learn about every aspect of what went into making the movies. There's information about set design, costume design, special and practical effects, makeup effects, animatronics, filming techniques, and more. There are also demonstrations for the practical and special effects.
There is truly so much to see here. I didn't film nearly everything. From discovering Buckbeak the Hippogriff in the Forbidden Forest to boarding the actual Hogwarts Express used in the movies, this tour is an amazing experience for any Harry Potter fan. About halfway through the tour, you go outside to the back lot where you will find a model of the burrow, the night bus, and the Hogwarts Bridge. You can also walk through number 4 Privet Drive and see the iconic envelope scene from the first movie and blown up Aunt Marge from the third. Then you walk through the Hogwarts greenhouse and see the mandrakes from the second movie. <laughs> Next to the back lot is also one of the restaurants. This is the only spot where you can buy butter beer, but be prepared to wait in line. Once you head back inside, it is time to learn about how makeup and animatronics were used to create different creatures, characters, and props. Gringotts Bank was one of my favorite parts because you get to walk through the massive set. It is beautifully designed. Another of the best parts of the tour is the room with a giant model of Hogwarts Castle and the grounds. They use this for the wide shots of Hogwarts in the movies. The lights slowly change so you can see what the castle would look like during day and night. There is also a fireworks projection. Okay, I have finished doing the studio tour and it was really, really epic. If you're a Harry Potter fan of the books or the movies, I definitely suggest you check it out. It is a little pricey, I would say, but definitely worth it. They say it will take you about three, three and a half hours to do it, but I was in there for about five hours. I did eat and wander through the gift shop for quite a bit, even though I didn't buy anything. So kind of plan in accordance to that. You might want to add more time, especially if you're with a bigger group, or if you do any of the green screen photo ops that cost extra, because I didn't do any of that, and the lines are long for that as well. So if you plan on doing those, then you're gonna have to add in even more time. Inside, there's also four places to eat, and the prices are pretty good. There's all sorts of different things, burgers, pizzas, along with drinks, sweets, lots of different treats that you can get. I ended up eating at the Mischief Managed one and I got this sausage that was wrapped with bacon, with onions and colorful condiments. It was messy, but really good. That came with chips or fries and it was $11.55 for that. And then plus I got a drink as well. You can also do an afternoon tea service here, which you have to book in advance, I think, but it looked really good based on the photos. So if you're into that, maybe look and check the availability. Okay, I almost forgot too that I was going to say about like getting here from London you will have to probably take the tube or the underground depending on where you're staying and what you want to do is get to the Euston or Easton or however you say it station and then from there you can get on the train you're gonna go to Watford Junction from there and then there's a free shuttle bus to the actual place that's pretty much it pretty easy I think the public transportation for me was about 20 pounds round trip but again it depends on where you are if you have to use the tube or not or you can also drive as well okay i'm finally gonna go ahead and hop on the bus and the train and the underground and head back to my hotel i do have a really early train to paris on the eurostar tomorrow so if you want to see that make sure you are subscribed because that will be the next video coming out 
Um, thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you for tuning. Okay, wait.